Ship dry docking starts from regulatory bindings, dock selection, docking, docking activities, and finally successful sea trials. This short animated film has been developed to provide this whole concept in a brief overview. A ship is always floating in the water, hence it is essential to inspect its underwater hull and machinery condition from time to time. According to SOLAS Chapter 1, Regulation 10 and IMO Marine Safety Committee Circular number 1223 and Classification Society. Every five years, a ship must undertake a main class inspection, plus or minus three months. Every two and a half years, an intermediate survey must be carried out. The time in between these inspections must not exceed 36 months. For more information, check the DNV GL Part 7, Chapter 1. Before taking the vessel to dry dock, the ship's superintendent must know which type of dry dock is suitable for their vessel. There are five types of dry dock currently in used in the maritime industry. Graving, floating, synchro lift, slip blaze and cradle lift. The two most common are graving and floating. Graving docking is a solid concrete slab basin with various walls and gates where blocks can be laid. The vessel is manoeuvred inside the dock and rested on these blocks. When the ship is in the required position, the gates are closed and the water removed. A floating dock is essentially a giant floating ship with a large box-shaped tank to use as a dock. Floating docks are able to submerge, be placed under the ship in need of repair. The water is then pumped out of the dock, raising the ship out of the water. The ship becomes blocked on the deck of the floating dock for repair. The superintendent is then responsible for organising the logistics gathering and managing the quotes, and liaising with the onboard crew. The preparation and planning stage for a vessel to go into dry dock is the most important for the superintendent, chief engineer and onboard crew. They will typically work together on the repair plan, fuel and lube oil consumption, the survey plan, the close-up survey plan, thickness gauging and tank testing. Thickness gauging and tank testing are an essential part of every five-year dry dock. The vessel must prepare a shell and expansion drawing and the general arrangement plan drawing with all of the original thicknesses of the plates given. This is to be prepared by the vessel's crew in advance and submitted to the dockyard, the classification surveyor and the technical department for review and budgeting. Prior to entering the dock, the ship is generally moored outside of the dock at anchor. The docking kickoff meeting will be conducted on board with all the essential parties. They will then discuss and sign off all safety documents. Tugs will tow the vessel into dock. Before the vessel enters the dock, the blocks are placed. When the vessel is entering the dock, stability matters. The vessel is sitting on the dock blocks by the astern trim to minimise the loading impact on the keel which could cause high bending moments and lead to structural failure. After entering the dock, the dock gates will be closed and pumping out of the water will begin. The vessel will be manoeuvred so that it sits on its centre line. A positive GM must be maintained to ensure the stability of the vessel and avoid accidents. A shore connection should be made for electricity and cooling water while the vessel is in dry dock. The class surveyor, chief engineer and shipyard staff 
will carry out a visual inspection of the ship's hull and underwater machinery, such as the propeller, the rudder, thrusters, stern tube, and sea chest. Once the initial inspection is complete, all of the ship's anchor chains are arranged on the dock floor. The anchors and cables are then inspected and thickness gauging is carried out in front of the chief engineer and class surveyor to determine the quality and condition. This is a class requirement where the thickness is measured and a maximum of 12% wear is allowed. All defective parts are repaired or replaced as required with approved chain link or repair procedure. At this point, the rudder plug is opened to check its structural watertight integrity. Any cracks or damage are noted for repair during the dry dock. The bottom plug for the ballast tank is removed and secured with a number. Upon completion of ballast tank cleaning and inspection, this is put back again before the vessel leaves dry dock. The chief engineer is responsible for checking this item physically. At this point during dry dock, a class approved thickness gauging company will carry out hull, deck and tank structure thickness checks in the presence of the class surveyor. A minimum of three girth belt from the midship is required by the classification rule. Hull cleaning to remove marine growth and increase fuel efficiency is conducted, firstly with a high pressure power washer and then secondly with some sandblasting. Then an anti-fouling paint is applied to the hull. This paint is environmentally friendly and TBT free. The propeller, rudder and thrust tail shaft are removed for internal inspection. Again, the classification surveyor and the chief engineer must be present during this operation. The sea chest valve and other overboard valves are also removed and inspected by the class surveyor. The sea chest grid and the chest thickness must be gauged. When the ship's in dry dock, other work can take place. External contractors take this opportunity to carry out maintenance on engines, pumps, tanks and cargo spaces. Repairs on the rudder, propeller and shafting are also made. In the engine room, the main bearing, engine piston, boiler, heater, condenser and pumps are opened as part of the CSM survey. Again, the surveyor and the chief engineer will attend this inspection. Before the dock is flooded, final checks are made. The external machinery is checked. Then the bottom plug and overboard valves are fitted securely back in place. The anchor chains are checked. And finally, the shore power and cooling lines are disconnected. The dock is flooded. Tugs are hooked up and the ship is towed out of the dock to Anchorage. At Anchorage, a pressure test will be carried out, which is part of the five-year survey. The ship will then run various load checks to ensure that the engine performance, boiler performance, rudder and propeller performance are all acceptable and there is no water leakage. Upon completion of the sea trial, the chief engineer, the master and the superintendent will collect all of the certificates. These will be given by the shipyard and the class surveyor and would include the maintenance report, the thickness gauging report, the classification report and all certificates. This completes dry docking.